Hillary. Yes. You're a member of Kid Nation. Yes, I am. And you contacted us. Absolutely. Oh, mic up, Hillary. Just talking She's to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go, I, Hillary. I don't, I'm not experienced. Hi, Hillary. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so you're a member of Kid Nation. Yes. And you got in contact with our producer. Yes. Because of a really cool story involving your dad. Absolutely. Your dad is now a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> He's always been a movie star to me. All right. So we brought you in here, obviously, because you guys are part of our family, but because we want to get to know your dad, John. So tell, tell us about your family real quick and why you hit us up. Well, um, we've been listening to y'all for 20 years. It feels like you're a part of our family. Right. Um, we've Y'all are our dinner t table conversations and everything we listen to in the car every day. And we know each and one of you, every one of you, S more than enough we're not stalkers but we do know you <laughs> a lot so um it was just really important to include my dad's story he means so much to me i can't imagine my world without him and i really wanted to get his story out because i think it's so important and it's so important to know about his journey and the 15 years that we've gone through with him and i know my brothers and sisters wanted to be a part of this and and we just wanted to give back and help other people that may be going through the same thing and create awareness. Well, and what your father is living with is ALS, yes. Yes. right? And it's right. been an ongoing battle for 15 years, you 15, said? 15, which is record. And yes. most people die two to five years. Yeah. 15 years. Yes. Uh, we have Mr. Payne in front of us. Still here. Hey, John hey. Payne. 15 years later. Fighting. So when they first gave you the diagnosis... And they, they told you that the outcome wasn't looking good. What was the first thought that went through your, your mind? Uh, partial mental shutdown. Yeah. 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 Disbelief. Numbness. Numbness, uh, a, a little anger, uh, a number of things, just because uh, this was the kind of thing that was supposed to happen to others. Right and not me and apologize for the partial words that I have to wait on the okay, ventilator to feel I don't need to apologize yes, for man. anything John Dude, I have <laughs> to pause all the time when yeah. I talk and I, and that's, he I, has I no excuse I don't apologize now, it was probably more difficult for you because I mean you were an athlete growing up you played college ball you everything you did you excelled at and then now they're, you're being told you're not perfect anymore in, in, in a sense, right? Is I that how you felt physically? Yeah. yeah. That's correct. If, you know, one of my greatest fears was to be incapacitated or just exist. And so a uh, diagnosis of paralysis from the hair down to your toes was one of the most frightening things that... Yeah. How, could have how, ever occurred. How did it start? What was the first thing you, you started noticing before you're like, I need to get to the doctor because this isn't right? Because they say it's a small tingle, right? Or And a lot of yeah. men wait and wait, and they won't go after the first Why, John? Because we're men. Yeah. You know, we're, yeah. That's how we are. I was uh, lifting weight to the local gym. Yeah. And I had uh, fasciculations. Now, that's a or, big medical word. We well, don't know what that I means. No I, mean, what I don't know what that means, John. Fasciculations. Well, well uh, just ex I'll just say excuse me afterwards, but uh, <laughs> no. Uh, fasciculations are like involuntary muscle twitches. Uh -huh. okay. okay. Like you have over your eye when you have nervousness. Yeah. Right. You can't control or stop them. But it was in your arm. But it was actually in my forearm. Yes, and, and began to lose string in that arm, and uh, which was highly unusual. So. My wife suggested that I go to my doctor. And, of course, you didn't listen to her now, at first. Margaret. <laughs> for three years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Miss, Mrs. Payne, how many times did you have to tell him to go to the doctor before, before he finally went? Just talk right to the mic, Mom. Okay. I just um, made the appointment and put him in the car. <laughs> exactly. Uh, there you go. Exactly. There yeah, you, you said, hey, John, we're going to go out to dinner, and you took him to the, do to the doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when you get that kind of life-changing news, how did you guys start? living differently i mean did you from that exact moment as a family i knew exactly where i was when i i knew he was going to the doctor our mom was taking him to dinner and um i was at coit and campbell in dallas and i had just gotten done with the doctor's appointment 
and I told them to call me when they found out what the news was. Well, when they didn't call, I knew what the news was. And I just drove around and around that stupid Einstein's bagels at, at Coit and Campbell and walked in to the house. And they were both sitting at the living, or the table where we ate. And they were just in, shock. I could just see the shock. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And Amanda, you're, you're a nurse. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm sure that once you were told what was going on, you you knew what was going to take place. Well, to tell you the truth, um, I was in nursing school at the time, yeah. um, just finishing up, and so I had really never heard of it before. And so I headed, um, uh, my mom told me, and I could tell by the tone of her voice that, that it was not good. And so I was like, oh, okay, all right, well, you know, we'll do everything like our family does and just take it a step at a time and hit it straight on. And I went and I, and I, uh, looked in the glossary of my um, nursing books, and I looked up what it was, and it was the the shortest um, entry in there for diseases because it just said what it was, yeah. what it did, and no cure. It's and the worst news you could possibly it, get about your dad. It truly was. It truly was. And um, but we did um, uh, to speak on on your point that that you made is that we did we. Um, it was very important to mom and dad for us to start doing things differently as a family. And so um, we, they decided to um, change Christmas up a little bit. And on Christmas morning, um, we would have had a designated week uh, set aside where all the adults would have taken off of work. And we would find out Christmas morning where our destination was going to be. And um, wow. so we started taking trips called Making Memories. We even had shirts. Uh-huh. <laughs> you had that's shirts. right. When you're when you're a pain, you you do everything you know to to the fullest extent. And so we did. We have Making Memories T-shirts, and that's we awesome. we went together, and and nothing went unsaid. You know, if you thought something, you you said it. If you were thankful for something, we said it to each other. And I think that that made. A really big Everything, difference. Everything, every emotion you felt, anger, happiness, sadness, right. you would just throw it out there for right. the family to hear. Exactly. Hmm. John, and from the, from the moment you were diagnosed, when was when did you start feeling pain? And then when did you start losing your extremities, the, the ability to use your extremities? Well, things just began to get heavier. And so people would say, oh, you can still pick up that cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. You look just fine. But they didn't realize is that cup of coffee weighed a hundred pounds, mm. and so it was all I could do to pick up the cup of coffee. But then, certainly, you know, another few months, and then you get to look at the cup of coffee, wishing you wishing that you could pick it up. Right. At that point, you you um go through a process of of saying goodbye to things your freedom basically and and saying goodbye to holding your wife's hands saying goodbye to taking a walk saying goodbye to putting your own clothes on saying goodbye to taking a shower if but it helps a process called acceptance. Right. Rather than fighting and, uh, and, and mentally struggling, you learn the process to accept what you have. It means, doesn't mean you have to like it. Right. But you learn to accept it bit by bit because we're either a cubby bitter or we're becoming better and i didn't like the bitter part i didn't like being around bitter people right (laughs) and i didn't want anyone to have to to experience that with me it it took away your ability to do the things you loved but it didn't take away your spirit that's the one thing you can hold on to this diagnosis was what two to five years is the average life expectancy mm-hmm. after that, right? And mm-hmm. it's been 15. Mm-hmm. What do you attribute that feat to? 
that the brothers speak. Okay. Oh, the guy from the brawny paper towels so, <laughs> wants to speak. <laughs> yes. The, uh, I love it. My dad is a fighter. He's always been a fighter. Yeah. Um, he's always been the guy that, you know, most dads teach their kids how to kick a ball. You know, when you kick it and you watch where it goes. My dad, when he kicked the ball, it disappeared. Am I right, bro? Sure. Am I right? Yeah. So this guy, he could do anything. He had superhuman strength. Um, but what we saw happen is, is this superhuman physical strength as it began to melt away over the, over the months, uh, days sometimes, because uh, it comes in waves. It's you know? fast, isn't it? it? It's, it's fast, but it happens in waves. So you're, you're, st you're steady for a little bit, and then, wow, that hand just disappeared, and you, you can't use it anymore. Mm. The neck stops functioning. Um, but we saw that external fight shift to the inside. Um, and he never, ever lost hope. He still has hope. And that's the one, the blessing that he continues to give people is hope. And so my dad's a fighter, and you don't see it on the outside. Yeah. Um, he doesn't have the big guns he used to, but the <laughs> spirit is alive and the spirit is well. The movie you guys created, what do you guys call it? What's the title for it? The Luckiest, the luckiest, luckiest man. man. One would say a person with ALS uh, would not be considered that. So why would you guys go with that title? That was, his, that was your that call, was John. John? Why that title, John? Well, uh, pretty simple. The um, the things that I had always wanted in life uh, were really the internal things of peace, contentment, joy, intimate relationships. And discovered just how important all those were. But, and more importantly, had attempted to fulfill those in much of my life through success, achievement, accomplishments, the good opinion of others, you name it, a lot of yardsticks that are used. And I'll just uh, tell you that uh, I did not receive those. Peace, contentment, joy, intimate relationships from all these other sources that I've just described. But I discovered those on a journey of transformation, on a transformation of the heart, a transformation of slowing down, a transformation of solitude, a transformation of, yes, Kelly, what you were talking about, a, a, a deeper relationship with God. And through that, I did receive all that I'd ever looked for, longed for, or desired. And a uh, peace occurred in the midst of turmoil. A contentment occurred in the midst of a horrible diagnosis. A joy, a joy occurred in the midst of very bad uh, circumstances. And so, in intimate relationships occurred with the most important people in my life, my God, my wife, my children, and How could you not be the luckiest man in the world when man, you had those? I'm jealous of you. You're so inspirational. You, you are in such a good place right now. I, 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 seriously, I'm, I'm just like, man, he's got it together. He leads a yoga class. Do you want to? He's very limber. I mean, I'm telling you, you, you seem like you're in such a 
good place. Like, and we have no room to complain about anything. <laughs> you were saying this is a movie, this The Luckiest movie. Man, and this is by the same people when we had in a, about Travis a year Mills. ago with Travis Mills, the same producers. How did you get in touch? Did they find you? How did your story get to the movie producers? Um, actually, um, our pastor, uh, Neil Tomba, um, we've uh, obviously known him for a number of years, and he nominated um, Dad um, and contacted uh, Photolanthropy um, on on our behalf, and so they reached out to us, and and it's just been really neat to see that all come together and the, and the timing of that. Absolutely fabulous they organization have. to work with. This they is have. created to. This is not to make money. This isn't to be entertained. This is to change lives. That's Correct. the that's the point Correct. of this. Inspirational Using, stories yeah. to change lives. Um, yes, Miss Mrs. Payne, if I could ask you, what would be the the advice you would give? to a spouse or a a son or daughter going through what you guys went through on the other side? Like when you're first told the news, what would you tell them to do? I know that's a tough one, but looking back at it after going through it. Um, Just putting one foot in front of the other. I mean, it is, it's a long, for me, it was very slow. I really could not put ALS and my husband's name in the same sentence. I, I just couldn't. He was much quicker to go in start speaking to men's Bible studies and things. I couldn't, I couldn't go with him. I couldn't go there. So God was gracious. It was a slow uh, process for me, and I just took the amount of time I needed. So Take I think, uh, yeah, I think that for everybody it is do what you need to do to begin to let and everybody's it, journey yeah. is different. Yeah, right. everybody's journey is so different. It's okay different. to cry. It's okay to be angry oh, as yeah, long as you come yeah. out of it like you did. Yeah, do you and believe reach that out. everything happens for a reason? Some people say, eh, some stuff just happens, but do you think there was a reason for all this to happen to your family? I don't know. I won't say that I think there was a reason, but God has done amazing things in our family through it. Mm-hmm. And like, like he says, I, I wouldn't go back to the way things were before, even when... Everything was so much peachier looking, according to what the world would say. I wouldn't go back to that because my relationship with God is Mm -hmm. totally different. My relationship with my husband is totally different. My children, I wouldn't go back. Uh, Well, we do want to tell people about the movie. The book is almost complete, but the movie is complete now, right? We're having a screening. We're a screening. Correct. At the Angelica. At the Angelica Theater? At at the Angelica Theater. At the Mockingbird. Now, if we're not able to make it out to the Angelica Theater because... We don't live here in Dallas. I mean, is it too late to get tickets? I mean, yeah, is this like you're all thing? invited? We've well, really? we've got you on the very very front row. Is that okay? Aww. Thank you. At the, at I should, this I'm point, gonna make it, it is, happen. Um, it is uh, sold out. So I knew it. Three theaters. But yes, oh. good you. Are we going to be able to, to purchase this movie or to watch it somewhere? Yeah, is it downloadable? How do people? Is it going to be going across the country in small theaters? You know. Um, uh, we are still mapping that road out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the the greatest thing um, and the biggest help for uh, leading us down that avenue is, for those of you who do see it um, tonight, is to make comments, go on social media, uh, let people know what you think, um, and because it is our is our hope, it is our desire to be able to get it into um, the the hands and the screens of, yeah. of other people and and be able to share it around the country. Didn't um, uh, uh, can't you go to photolanthropy dot com or where do you? Yes, if you can, um, you can find out any details about um, the film and and where it's at um, at photolanthropy dot com. And we'll put a link up at kidnation dot com yeah. and make sure oh. just in case they don't. So oh, we have to spell all that for people. That's yeah. a lot. Because there may be a few tickets. <laughs> there may be a few uh, tickets left. And yeah, Katie's are. Katie's already said there's there's tickets for. Anybody in the oh, show? We're, we're, I'm down. Okay, there yeah. will be a link at kidnation.com. Name of the movie is The Luckiest Man. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Payne, if there's anything you would like to say to anybody that is starting this journey that you've been on for 15 years, what would that be? Oh. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> in short summary. But. Uh, oh, wait. Short sermon or short <laughs> summary? <laughs> summary. Oh, okay, summary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. No, uh, there is always hope, even in the midst of the darkest cloud. 
I can't always say to everyone that there's a silver lining. But I can tell you that if if you will run toward God, it's a whole lot better than running away from him. So my encouragement would be to run toward him and look for the hope that only he can provide. They have told you, my children, that uh, the things that I used to could do, well, I can't do any of those that I used to do. They're really not here because of what I could do. They're here because of who I've become. And it's a different person. I'm excited to be that different person. I hope for others they don't have to receive a terminal diagnosis to decide to become a different person. It's beautiful. Your proof that strength doesn't come from muscles, strength comes from the people you surround yourself with. Will you adopt me? (laughs) <laughs> you, you seriously have made our lives better I'm just telling, in the, in the you, man, 20 minutes we've good. met you in person. You made me feel Are good. Are you paying yeah. for the Christmas trip? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, boy. He's uh, in. Get back with Joe now. <laughs> Again, Vegas? We'll, we'll, we'll put all the links up at kidnation.com if you want to see the trailer to The Luckiest Man or if you want information on where it's going to be screened. I just want to thank you, Mr. Payne, and your family mm-hmm. for coming in. Absolutely. And being so such an inspirational thank person. You. Thank you, JC. Absolutely. I really do appreciate it. Beautiful family. Yay. This is great. This is great. Uh, For the pains.